really enjoy living a nomadic lifestyle and so having a tiny home on wheels that we could move around when we wanted really made sense for us. Our home is this 1968 Airstream Overlander that we converted ourselves without any prior building experience. Our trailer measures 26 feet from the tongue to the tail and at 6.5 feet wide it makes up 160 square feet of livable space and we've been living in it now for 18 months full time. The decision to adopt a tiny home lifestyle at this point in our lives was right for us for many reasons. The most obvious being that it was affordable and attainable. We absolutely love living, working, and adventuring here in BC, but the cost of living is very expensive. We wanted the autonomy and empowerment of having our own space, but we weren't quite ready to commit to buying a property or taking on a huge mortgage. Currently, our tiny home on wheels is nestled in the woods on a private property here on Vancouver Island. Our rental agreement is month to month and includes water and an electrical hookup. There's also laundry on the property. Our rent is a small fraction of the cost of a one bedroom apartment in this area, so we feel pretty fortunate. The landowners have poured a lot of love into this property and we have a gorgeous garden space that they share. James and I contributed four raised beds and we love that we have an opportunity to grow fresh food year round. We purchased the Airstream for $8,000 knowing it would be an enormous project and we started working on it immediately with the goal of living in it in just two months. The chassis and the shell were in really good condition but like every Airstream ever it was leaking, there was mold everywhere, areas of rotten subfloor, there was evidence that rodents had called it home for a while and it just needed a complete overhaul. The propane system was non-functional, the plumbing really had to be replaced, and we didn't even want to use the original wiring because it was made from aluminum. The demolition phase was pretty fun, but the next part of the process was incredibly painstaking, removing all of the paint and the original vinyl plastic coating from the inside of the aluminum skins so that when we repainted it, the paint would actually stick properly. The next step was building the walls, which was also an interesting challenge for us novice carpenters. Being that it was a curved space, it wasn't on level ground, and it just made making the walls straight, level, and plumb really challenging. We custom built all of the cabinetry and the countertops inside of the trailer ourselves, and we made it mostly from 3 quarter inch plywood. We did look into using prefabricated cabinets, However, we didn't feel that they would hold up very well with the movement inside of the trailer. And additionally, there's so many curves and wheel wells and different things that we'd have to build around them. It was actually just easier at the end of the day to build it all ourselves. And additionally, when we crunched the numbers at the end, it came in just ever so slightly cheaper. Another intimidating part of the build was working with fiberglass for the first time to build our bathroom. Bathrooms are tricky in tiny spaces and we had to work around the wheel well, so that meant we couldn't buy a custom shower pan or shower enclosure, so we used fiberglass to build our own custom shower pan and we're super happy with how it turned out. As soon as you walk into the Airstream, you enter our main living area. It's a multi-purpose space where we work, eat, and hang out. We designed the space to be very inviting with big pillows so that it's really comfortable. It was important to us to be able to entertain in this space and we also wanted it to be very functional so that we could work in here as well. So we have a lagoon table bracket that swivels in all directions. You can adjust the height so that it's really ergonomic when you're working in the space, but you can also move it completely out of the way if you wanna do activities like yoga. And it's really helpful when we have a lot of people in this space and we need to move around. There's tons of storage. We designed these pull out drawers and shelves and the seating area also encloses our fresh water tank so that that's completely out of view. The table also packs completely away and we can transform the space into a bed if you want to have a guest stay over. So it's a really functional space and we love hanging out up here and cozying up by the fire in the winter. 
The kitchen is the most important part of our tiny home on wheels. I studied nutrition in university and James loves to cook, so it was really important to us to build a functional kitchen that we both enjoyed cooking in. We wanted a lot of counter space, so we made 15 feet of wooden countertop from walnut. It was also important to have ample storage for cooking essentials and pantry goods, so we built large, deep slide-out drawers, and we even have a pull-out garbage and compost bin, which is super handy. We designed the space around the things we use daily, and so everything is organized and fits well in the space. We cook on a three-burner Dometic stovetop and have an RV size oven. We don't have a dishwasher, but we have a really deep sink with a super powerful faucet, which makes doing dishes a breeze. Our fridge is a regular household bar fridge, which runs on 110 volts. We don't have a freezer, but we eat a lot of local fresh produce and also eat a lot of things from the garden on the property. So we find that it's perfect for us. The kitchen countertops extend to our back bed area where we have six deep pull-out drawers that store things like clothes as well as more pantry items for the kitchen. We have a standard double-sized bed adjacent to a four-foot closet. We built custom bedside tables from the same walnut as the kitchen countertops. There's tons of storage back here. Under the bed, we have totes where we pack away our seasonal clothing. We can also store our skis, snowboard, and hiking gear under the bed. There's also ample storage space in the closet and we keep things like our instruments and yoga mat for easy access. Finally, we have our wet bath, which is a simple design with a shower and nature's head composting toilet. We designed the trailer to be off grid. However, we're currently located on grid. We have a fresh water tank housed in the front of the trailer that you can fill up from the tongue and we also have a pressurized water hookup that comes through the rear of the trailer. We run electricity to the trailer via a 30 amp hookup that comes through the back and then splits through two 15 amp 110 circuits that run parallel down each side of the trailer. We also have a 12 volt system that supplies power to our water pump as well as to our 12 volt sconces and accessories. We have 40 pounds of propane that is located on the tongue of the trailer, supplying propane to our Dometic oven and stove, as well as our on-demand water heater, which is located underneath the sink. We're shaded from the sun during the hot summers, and luckily the winters are also very mild, so we're pretty comfortable all year round. The trailer is minimally insulated, but the Cubic Mini wood stove heats the space perfectly when supplemented overnight with an electric baseboard heater. Condensation, mildew, and mold can be a problem in trailers and tiny spaces, which is another reason why we went with a wood stove, because it's a dry heat. We also purchased a small dehumidifier, which works perfect to minimize condensation during the cold, wet, rainy season here in the PNW. James and I practice minimalism, so living together in this tiny space for the most part feels pretty natural for us, although the process of paring down and living tiny definitely didn't happen overnight. We've been on a journey of minimalism both together and separately for many years, and we've really had to challenge our relationship with consumerism and material things in order to live comfortably in this little space. We have found that living in a small space really encourage us to be very mindful and intentional about the things that we consume and purchase, and that that's really overflowed into all areas of our life, including our work, our time, and our relationships. And so we're finding that we're living a much more intentional life just by adopting a tiny house lifestyle. Living and working together in 160 square feet definitely has come with its challenges, especially when we were restoring and renovating the space while we were still living in it. That was super chaotic. The other huge challenge we have is when our schedules are differing. It works great when we're on the same schedule, but if I'm working night shifts and needing to sleep during the day, then it's really difficult for Allison to also be in the trailer. Every time you walk around, the trailer shifts ever so slightly, and I just find it really hard to sleep like that. 
So basically, if we're not on the same schedule, we have to give each other the space that we need, and so we've just really learned to do that well. Yeah. The other challenge that we've had inhabiting the 160 square feet together is I'm naturally a slob and a mess and that can be a real conflict sometimes because it's such a small space and the slightest mess just makes the trailer look absolutely destroyed. So these are things you work on together when you're in a, a small space. The other thing I would add is that we live in the woods and so we really have to make friends with the bugs and the critters that find their way in here and you just kind of have to be okay with ants crawling up the walls or mosquitoes buzzing around. It's a small sacrifice for living in a really beautiful place. Overall, we're really happy living this way. Financially, living tiny has been really beneficial, so much so that we've been able to scale back our working hours and our conventional jobs and start our own business. We also have so much more time for doing things that we love, like being outdoors and doing creative things, and we're just finding so much more joy in our lives now that we've been living this way. Living this way has also enabled us to buy a sailboat, which has been a huge dream of ours for a long time. So when we're not living here in the forest in our Airstream, you can find us out sailing around the Strait of Georgia. You can follow Allison and James on their YouTube channel at Allison and James. Also subscribe to Exploring Alternatives for more stories like this, and please share this video if you liked it. Thanks for watching.